the cultural Marxists is to understand that in order to destroy the society, it's all about destroying the father, the primordial pattern of the culture. And that means you make them atheists and sexual deviants. When you get God and the father, when you destroy religion and sexuality, society's done. That civilization is done. It's only a matter of time. And people think sexual deviance is uh, liberation, but it's nothing but domination. Look up E. Michael Jones, Libido, libido Domanandi. The best way, the way you start controlling the population is you make them sexual degenerates. They think they're free, but now they're slaves of their sexual desire. Yo, Elliot. How important is it to be married before having children? I have to go, but appreciate your insight. Man, I can give you my opinion, but I've got a lot of old school, traditional trad con ideas um, that I think are gonna make a comeback in our degenerate world that's falling apart, coming apart by the seams. Um, and it's not expedient, but the world has completely accepted decadence, degeneracy, and diabolical disorientation as a normal way of being. So when I share my opinions, you got to understand that it might not even seem quote unquote practical, but I think that it is of your best interest. I, I think it's a very good idea to be married when you have children. I even think that the integrity that the child feels, I think the child, there's an integrity that the child experiences, senses in its soul when the mother and father are bonded that way, have become one flesh. Prior to degeneracy becoming normal, prior to everybody having fuck buddies and baby daddies and abortions, there was shame associated with having a baby out of wedlock. I think one of the things that we need to bring back is shame. And they used to call babies that were born out of wedlock bastards. Ain't real nice, right? Because how many of how many of you guys? I don't, I'm not calling you bastards. I'm just showing you the way things have changed. But how many of you guys? You know, you, your parents had you. You're born out of wedlock. Most of my friends, most of my friends, they have they they just got they're just together. They're just together. They live together. They have babies. I don't think it's right. Not only do I not think it's right, but Science has shown, evident statistics have shown that children that are born to parents that are out of wedlock don't thrive as well in society. They don't do as well. They have more problems. And I don't think it's just good enough that the mom and dad are together. I think that there is a, there's a, there's a, there's a soul tie. There's a, there's a, spiritual covenant there is a lifelong agreement a solid ground to stand on for the family when the parents are married before they have the children but then again 70 percent divorce 90 percent are initiated by women the whole our whole world is crumbling and it's imploding because the family has been attacked. The last battle will be for the family. So, you know, as a Catholic, I like to read and learn about these apparitions. I don't know exactly what the word apparition means. <laughs> I should look it up, but, but they're basically um, events where people will encounter Jesus or Mary in their lives. There are these Marian apparitions where Mary, the mother of Jesus, comes to certain people throughout history and they've been approved by the church. You know, make it of what you want, but just listen to what I have to say. There's one that was called the Lady of Good Success, where uh, Mary came to this nun in Portugal, I think, or somewhere in South America in like the 1500s. And she explained to this nun what was going to happen over the course of the next, like, she didn't give her the time frame, but she said that the, there are various things that are going to happen as the world is starting to come to an end and starting to unravel at the seams. 
And all of them, I mean, this is an apparition for a couple hundred years ago. I don't know if it was a 1500 or 1600. Anyway, it's a couple hundred years ago. Look it up, the Lady of Good Success, Our Lady of Good Success. And she describes how at the very last stance, when Satan has basically put the knife in and is twisting it for the death of humanity, he says the last, she says the last battle will be for the family. When you see the family under attack, that's when the world is, you're basically there. Look at the greatest attacks that have happened that has destroyed our culture. It has been removing the fathers from the home. It has been abortion. It has been contraception. I didn't really believe it until I started looking at it, but how contraception destroys sexuality and families. I could go into it right now, but I won't because there are a bunch of other things. Abortion is rampant. Look at the LGBTQ confusion that they're pouring into our children's brains. You know what that's about? It's about destroying the family by destroying sexuality so that children don't make babies anymore. When a boy cuts his penis off and starts taking hormones or vice versa, they're sterile. What do you think these vaccinations and Bill Gates talking about controlling population through them is about? Sterilization. What do you think about, what do you think plummeting testosterone levels and pesticides and birth control pills in our piss is all about? Sterilization. What do you think about, what do you think this whole quote unquote green movement, sustainable bullshit is about? It's about depopulation. How do you depopulate the planet? Destroy the family. Destroy, and how you destroy the family? Destroy sexuality. Feminism, radical feminism. Divorce rape, destroy marriage. Mar Nobody's getting married anymore, and I don't blame them. Nobody's getting married anymore because it's been destroyed by the courts. So I know you're asking me, you know, whether you should get married. You should get married or not. Uh, I do. I do. I believe it's better for the family, for the children, when a mother and a father have a agreement have a lifelong commitment to one another. Lifelong, forever. I know in our YOLO world, we can't handle the idea. We think that there's something, they think that there's something oppressive because not only women, you know, the feminism got to where it was by saying that women are oppressed by marriage, but even men, we're so effeminate now that we're like, marriage is oppressive to us because, but what about all the other pussy I want to go get? What about all the other girls? So I'm oppressed by my marriage. Real effeminate, real weak. We've been destroyed. We've been destroyed. And there's only going to be a remnant left. Hopefully, you and your wife and your family and the men that are in this program, you can make it work. And you'll be a part of that remnant. Because the world cannot repopulate itself after the devastation that we're going to experience in the next 10 years. If there aren't good, healthy, wholesome families, we need families, man. So that's my, that's my ideas on that, man. Don't let the lords of this world confuse you, lie to you, destroy you, turn you away from what's right and what's good, infiltrate the home, confuse your children, destroy your physiology, lie to you about overpopulation, lie to your women about oppression and how it is better to be a career woman than to be a mother. There's nothing better than being a mother. Nothing a woman could do better than being a great mother. But I'm a misogynist for saying that, right? ideological subversion, soft totalitarianism. We're, we're there, totally brainwashed, sick, sad, degenerate population. But, um, but I acknowledge you, my man, and uh, I hope things work out. I really pr I pray that things work out for you guys. You know what, if it's going to work, things are gonna work out with marriage, 
and things are going to work out with family and things are going to work out in a society, we have to return to the father. They knew, the cultural Marxists understand that in order to destroy the society, it's all about destroying the father, the primordial pattern of the culture. And that means you make them atheists and sexual deviants. When you get God and the father, when you destroy religion and sexuality, society's done. That civilization is done. It's only a matter of time. And people think sexual deviance is uh, liberation, but it's nothing but domination. Look up E. Michael Jones, Libido, libido Domanandi. The best way, the way you start controlling the population is you make them sexual degenerates. They think they're free, but now they're slaves of their sexual desire. And that's where we are. We're a bunch of atheist sexual degenerates in a declining society. Done. Yo, it's your bro Elliot Hulse here and I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent sessions with my King Transformation coaching students where among many things, we get together about four or five hours a week where we speak on things related to becoming kings in our lives in fitness, business, and with women. And if you wanna join a like-minded group of men that get together every day to grow stronger in every way during this degenerate age, it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word king, K-I-N-G, and then me or one of my teammates will get back to you with the details to see if you qualify to join us. I really hope to see you perhaps at our next live call. Done.